Talk to me about getting this thing ready to go open. So, I don't. So I don't think the goal was to change the code. Um, there are, of course, a few compliance things that we need to go and do. Uh, we need to figure out in terms of, of course, do a little bit of poly check, clean up the code. Uh, but for the most part, the structure is just the same. And the idea is that just the way we do development outside, uh, we need to do all the work to strip out all the you know legacy or maybe tooling that we've built up over the last eight to nine years. It's it's been Microsoft intern for this long, and Microsoft has been a Microsoft Windows only shop for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And now as we're moving away from that towards an open source environment, we need to go and adopt the tools that are available externally. So it's now breaking all of those dependencies, but um, as a whole, um, um, the code's the same, nothing's changed. It's really like, how do you take something that was all built internally and make it make sense to people that are not at Microsoft? Exactly. That's that's the hard part, because, I mean, you, like over the years, you build up things like, you know, people's names, links to like internal bug tracking systems mm -hmm. and stuff. If you put that out publicly, people are like, well, what the hell is this number? What does this mean? Mm -hmm. um, and right. then the tools obviously was a really big thing because we have a whole engineering you know, build pipeline internally that just doesn't exist outside of these walls. Yeah. So you can't obviously can't take that and put it out in the public because then nobody can build the damn thing. So a lot of it, <laughs> a lot of it was just how, how do you how do you turn an internal project into something that people externally can actually work with? Absolutely. Which which is pretty time consuming. So I mean, we started on this a long time ago. It's been I don't know maybe a couple of years when we started thinking about this. That was when we started. Really? When we started thinking about it. Of yeah, course. when we were doing the um, uh, Linux support. Mm -hmm. So at that time, it was like, well, we're probably going to want to open source this at some point. Mm -hmm. So when we start doing Linux work, let's try to use public tools this time. So we did a lot of that. There were some things, I remember, I think, Clang, we had like our own custom build of Clang. Yeah. That was one of the big things that um, just to make a build, make a build two yeah. million, three million lines of code a little bit faster, we had our own custom version of Clang. And, and we uh, still we still partially bit. there, but we're trying to move away from that. We yeah. We're going to get into the official, we're going to get our changes, or get a Clang, the official one, 5.0. So we going towards the right direction mm -hmm. and plus also like you said we started you know with Linux it made it easy saying that yeah. hey you're not tied into all the internal tooling at this point we use everything that's publicly available and that's the reason why the first iteration of it is Linux build works externally fine so you can build on a Linux machine because um, those dependencies were easy to break and were pretty much already always already the publicly available ones obviously we went out pretty light with this. It wasn't like a mm -hmm. bold, you know, dun da 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 da, which is great because mm -hmm. we're like, hey, this is a lot of code. We, we don't yeah. we don't have a lot of experience building out in the open mm -hmm. in service fabric world, and so we we're going to kind of tread lightly. You did a great job on your blog post, boss. It kind of all made this all really clear. That's the eighteen hours a day. But anyway. eighteen <laughs> hours a day. Um, but when I do, so my feedback would be like when when you first go to the repo, mm -hmm. um, and you have no context of what it takes to build a distributed system infrastructure uh, that's enterprise grade and you know it's nine years old and powers a lot of Azure um, where do I start like what do I like wh where, yeah. where like how do I wrap my head around where are the key features mm -hmm. like where are the key components like what's does FM mean so um, clearly we have work to do we're gonna and we are gonna do this work mm -hmm. by putting like readme files in all the top level folders. Yeah. Uh, more work for PMs and Charles. Well, I think Charles mainly. Yeah. And Charles mainly. And then also I was thinking we do a video series where we do a lap around uh, Azure Service Fabric, the code. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. We can say, hey, yeah. welcome to welcome. Here's where we're going to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. I happen to like reliability, so let's crack open that folder. Mm -hmm. So let's discuss. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, that's going to be fun, but in the meantime, my question that I'm trying to, to get out is, I, be, I go there the first time, I read the directions, now what? So let's say I figure out how to build it, mm -hmm. right? Like, what, what is it that we're trying to do here? Like, what do you want to get as a reaction mm -hmm. from a dev? Yeah, well, initially we just, we want to get the project up and running. We're trying to bootstrap right now. That's the main thing. So that was, when you said earlier, we went out kind of quietly. That mm -hmm. was the whole point because... Um, we're not new to distributed systems, but we're kind of new to open source. Yeah, uh, and it's it's harder. I think it's harder to take a pretty well established product or a project and make it open source because it's you know it's already kind of I won't say it's done, but um, it's hard to dive into a code base that's pretty mature. Mm. Like that's hard to do. So where do people? How do you get started on it? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the best thing it it takes a while to to become familiar with it all. There's there's kind of parts on the edge 
um, that have actually already been open source for a little while, like um, Service Fabric Explorer, which is the dashboard. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. the, the higher level application frameworks, those are all written in .NET and okay. C Sharp. Those have been open source for a little while. That's a little bit easier to get started because you don't have to know as much about the rest of the system to do it. But mm -hmm. if you're interested in the whole project, I mean, the best thing, the main thing that we're trying to focus on right now is just getting the environment set up. That means build system, tests, CI pipeline, just making that all work and work well, getting the Windows build side yeah. out there. Get, getting even, the entire team out there, I think. And then getting the entire team I think, out there. I think yeah, a part of this is, is also like, as we have, rather than, so one thing that would help you is rather than having an entire code dump, mm -hmm. as you see comments and PRs and coming yeah. in and people looking at those changes, uh, if, if something, if like you said, you're interested in um, the reliability area, right? Mm -hmm. So you go look at PRs over there. Mm -hmm. And as you're reading through the PRs and the context in there, you, you understand more. Mm -hmm. So that's one way for an external developer to learn better. So the faster we can get the entire team to start developing outside, mm -hmm. um, the easier it's going to be to kind of have people bootstrap and onboard on this. And in addition to that, of course, all the resources we spoke about, the readmes, um, the video series. Uh, we've had tech talks internally, white papers. Um, I mean... Either we, we need to update some of them, but this is what you know goes out there and helps folks on board. And I want to get some. I, I want to get some. Of those, so yeah, and I think a lot of this it's, it's it's a process, and we're like staging it, and we're gonna. Yeah. yeah. I think hope the hope is every few days, a week, or something, we have some update over there, which is yeah. like worthy for yeah. you know someone to come and say, hey, you know, I have something. I don't know if in GitHub, like the people are watching on the start, can we can send them notifications that there's an update? Um, yeah, I mean they'll get notifications for mm -hmm. certain things. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially if you're if you're watching the repo. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's but I think that'd be cool though because there's it's a mature code base, but there are a lot of there are a lot of engineers here that have spent a lot of time working on some of those things in there, mm -hmm. and there is some pretty cool stuff in there that yeah, I think people will be really stuff, excited yeah. to just oh, yeah. just talk about, just geek out for a little bit on a whiteboard. Oh yeah, is, for sure. Like like we have areas where we have a, we've had a single developer work on it for like seven years. So. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, so that's we need to get that looking. developer, yes. and that developer needs to live in his or her folder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, yeah. and they can talk about what they've been working mm -hmm. on. Yeah. So, yeah. for example, like um, the notion of the orchestration, not of containers, mm -hmm. but of like state machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all that stuff Things. that's actually going on underneath right. the covers in the runtime. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. actually making this distributed system like, like it's the flywheel. I mean, in other words, this is the thing. This is the stuff that really matters. Oh yeah, you like could, we want. I want. Like, if you look at that code, yeah. it's impressive, man. Yeah, you could spend hours just talking about like reconfiguration, the reconfiguration oh, yeah. agent, which which Ooh. which handles all the like. Okay, what replica needs to be where and in what role right now, based on the state of the system, like that stuff. Yeah, it's it's over my head, but I <laughs> not, for long. We, we, yeah, not for long. Yeah, not for long. We we touch on these things with our public documentation that we already have, but now that you have the code out there, then there's so much more detail that we can talk about. Oh yeah. What, yeah. So so we've been so we're at what we're like what weekend, weekend. Uh, not else? even less than Just a week. Less than yeah. a week. Yeah. Okay, so less give me week. some feedback. Like, let people know. Are you surprised by the the fanfare, or are there any interesting issues? Like, like mm -hmm. give like what is it like? Like. I mean, for, I mean, I was pleasantly surprised, uh, for yeah, sure. Like the, um, I mean, I thought we we not going out with much fanfare, like you said. I expected it to be quite, you know, low key, and not a lot of people watching. I mean, the fact that the next day I saw you we the trending repo on GitHub for that day, <laughs> I was surprised. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's that. it's cool to see that as well. <laughs> and plus, level like articles, like we, I thought there might be a couple of people at like the bigger ones, maybe uh, Mary Jo or someone might pick it up. But there were articles in like what Rishi Sena in Japan and mm -hmm. China and yeah. and some folks like you know uh, Lou was saying that on WeChat, he heard about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right on there. Right. We, we, yeah, so. Lou is somebody that we need to get on camera oh, yeah. as well, right? Lou He's one of the love, founding members. Yeah, so we'd yes. love to get him on camera. I talked to him once off camera. He, yeah. you know, he was like, "Okay, I will do it." And then every time I see him now, he kind of he sees me. He kind of scurries out of the way, but we'll work on him. Because yeah, I know not everyone likes to be on camera. Yeah, yeah. But he's 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 an interesting guy. He's he's crazy smart. What's what's the joke about Lou? We should all just quit and get out of the way so he can make the product. <laughs> he slow him down. We just slow him down. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So what's yeah. next? Like so, um, where what's next? So next. Like I said, we're, we need to get the team out on the game. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the biggest the big party one. right now. Um, and then getting Windows build systems set up, getting our CI process set up, and then getting our whole test infrastructure out there mm -hmm. too. So 
I mean, you can you can build for Linux and run some limited tests, but mm -hmm. we need the entire test infrastructure out there. So it's really just moving all of our processes. Yeah, yeah. Out to it's it's one. Given. It's it's all like I said. Like there's a timeline. We're staging it. Like even before yeah. probably moving the entire time, we are trying to at least get rather than being a snapshot or like code dumps, it's gonna be hey, you know, every comment shows up outside, even if the PR is internal, mm -hmm. uh, and then the entire team starts issuing. So it's 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 a it's along with uh, you know tooling chains and everything. Mm -hmm. It's also a cultural shift for the team, and we need to handle it well. We need to make sure that everyone, you know, is is has enough you know context and information, and it's as smooth as possible. And at the same time, it's useful for people externally as well. Yeah, yeah. And we're trying to run an open source project, so yeah, well. sure. a lot that we have to learn. But yeah. understood. But, uh, I mean, and hopefully, the community helps us with that. Us I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, not necessarily contributing code, but just telling us what yeah. we're doing wrong because yeah. we need yeah. to know. I think the more we know about, you know, hey, you know, this is like, I think a lot of times you see positive or, you know, constructive feedback saying, hey, you know, you know, this is great, but, you know, this is how most projects do it. And, yeah, right, you know, yeah. you guys are not doing it the right way. Yeah. That's great. We, we need we're, to know uh, yeah, why, why are you we're, using we're Jenkins? Mode. Yeah. <laughs> we need to use Jenkins, man. <laughs> so We need to pick one is the way to do it. <laughs> pick one, exactly. So today when we build, like I have a build going on right now because it mm -hmm. takes, what, 45 minutes? On Windows, yeah. Minutes, yeah. 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 So on, on a good PC. Yes. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, the devs yeah, here, we have, we have good PCs. Yeah. yeah. So, but the question, my question to you is, in the future when we move to mm -hmm. uh, GitHub, what's my build experience going to be like? Is it all going to happen in the cloud? I mean, or am I just I using GitHub as the source code repository mm -hmm. like VSTS? And then I'm actually building on my horsepower local mm -hmm. machine. And then obviously we merge up on, I mean, yeah. Talk to me. It's, it's, What's it's, the change going to be for the average dev? Uh, internally, yeah. uh, probably not much. That's going to be the same. Uh, but the goal is to improve on this process, right? We we have people assigned to make sure. Like it's right now, from up until now, all all of these toolings, the build tools, the test tools that we use internally was eighty five developers that use it. Mm -hmm. Now it's the entire world, right? So we need to go and improve on that. So we need to make sure that. Uh, Ideally, in the future, you could build on the cloud. We could probably cut down on the times. We could do parallel builds. We could do a lot of things. So, the hopes to get there. Uh, but the start of it, the experience will be: yes, you get the build down, uh, you get the code down, and you build on your machine. Got it. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, I mean, we are um, working on a few things to um, enable you to actually, like, rather than building locally, if you want to build on an Azure VM, if you don't have a powerful enough laptop or a machine, you could easily do that if you have an Azure subscription, mm -hmm. and probably in other, you know providers in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. So hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. So and also congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. you guys yeah. have been on this team for a while mm -hmm. and have been working so hard and uh, it's really nice to see, I mean what I consider beautiful code, mm -hmm. uh, really, really nice work out in the open. It, it feels so good. you should it feels feel great. Good to be out there. <laughs> I'm sure it does. It does. No, seriously. You should be no, proud. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right it's on. like it's one of the replies. Hey, one of the one of the senior developers who's been on the team for like working on like one of these areas for seven years now, and he he just went to GitHub and posted a link to his folder saying, "Whoa, this is out there." <laughs> oh yeah, everyone right. can see. I can see. I don't need to log in anywhere. I can just see it. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, congratulations, you guys, again, and thanks for spending mm -hmm. some time with us.